Uh, Donald Trump is not asking anymore. He's not being nice anymore. Telling General Motors, I asked you to start ramping up and making more ventilators. You've been dragging your feet, so now I am demanding you to do so. Uh, using some defense powers that the chief executive of America has that date back to the Korean War to make that happen. But will it happen? And is it a little too little too late? It's never too late to mark Cuban, but it's a good move on the part of the president, he says. He joins us right now. I'm talking about the Dallas Mavericks owner and, of course, multi-billionaire, uh, Mark Cuban. Mark, what do you think of what the president's doing here, forcing uh, you know, corporate America's hand to help out, much as uh, President Franklin Roosevelt did uh, after the attack on Pearl Harbor to rev up our military machine? What do you think? I mean, as long as he gets the job done, that's all that matters. There's obviously people's lives on the line, and so something has to happen. I, you know, they were talking before. I don't know what went wrong. Um, but if it gets General Motors to General Motors to get the job done, I'm all for it. Um, you were critical of 3M, not so much that they're ramping up production of, of ventilators and other things, uh, but but more to the point that they weren't doing enough on the face mask side to keep those prices down. Uh, right. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. Can you explain? Sure. 3M first, they get credit for ramping up production, absolutely, but they sell. Um, up until recently, they sell, as best I can tell, exclusively through distribution, meaning they, if you go to their website, there's a list of distributors that resell their N95 masks. Now, what's been happening is obviously everybody's aware of the shortages and the crises, crisis around the N95 masks not being available for health care workers. And they apparently have just let their distributors price whatever they want to price the mask at. And a lot, in a lot of cases... They're not selling them to health care providers. Those distributors are selling them to resellers and black marketers who are then trying to jack up the price even higher than the distributors did. And my point was in all this, there's a contractual relationship between the 3M licensed distributors and 3M corporate. It would have been very easy for them to say very strongly that if you don't sell, if you don't take the inventory we're providing you and sell directly to hospitals and health care providers, that need the mask, when your contract comes up, we're going to end that contract. But that's not what they did. And I have a huge problem with that. And what's happening now is the, the fed, federal government, and, and I've tried to help as much as I can, turning over some of these people who say they have inventory and want to sell it to me at a, a jacked-up price, the federal government is starting to go after some of the, the middlemen who have gotten in the way and helped um, t make this market really inefficient and enable all the price gouging. And my feeling has been if the CEO of 3M said don't do it, this could have stopped a long time ago. If the CEO of 3M said I only want you to sell to health care providers, this would have stopped a long time ago. Um, Mark, while I have you, the president yesterday when he addressed the American people at these um, uh, almost daily briefings that he and his task force have had, said he told his vice president not to call governors who are not appreciative of his uh, coronavirus help. Uh, that would include the governors of Washington State and Michigan, with whom he's had an acrimonious relationship, I guess, and they with he. Now, it didn't stop uh, him from declaring the, the, the disaster assistance that Michigan wanted. But what do you think of that to, to, to corner or cite uh, those who are appreciative of his efforts versus those who are not? I mean, it's wrong, obviously. But the good news is, I think, and I, you hate to say this, I think there's a lot of people in government who are just ignoring what he says on Twitter and ignoring what he says in the briefing and doing the right thing. I mean, you know, President Trump is who he is. We're not going to change him. But, and I think after three, three years now, people um, underneath him in government and different departments know that, you know, if they just go about their job and do the right thing, it'll all work out. So while it's obviously, you know, not the, the smartest thing to do by the president, the good news is, at least, at least with people that I've dealt with, even at lowest levels, they're like just head down, doing the right thing, doing their jobs, knowing that, you know, helping to get ventilators, helping to get masks where they need to be is the right thing to do. So if, if his words are not matching his actions in a good way, I mean, he might be talking tough and angry at those governors who are not appreciative of his efforts, but he's not taking it out on them in terms of at least in the case of Michigan, on aid or disaster relief that the mission and governor said she wanted and she got. Yeah, I mean, but still, why say it in the first place? You know, leaders lead. 
And I'll give Donald Trump tre- credit for things when he, when he does the right thing. He's deferred to Dr. Fauci. He's deferred to his experts when it comes to the coronavirus, you know, as of recently. Um, but come on, you know, in a crisis like this, this is not the time to create animosity and increase the people's stress. And I recognize he's still behind the scenes. He's allowing things to happen. He would have the opportunity to stop them if he wanted to. But, I mean, you know, look, and, and let me add to it. All lead, in this time of imperfect information, no matter what any leaders do, it's going to be wrong at some level. But there's no reason to add to the stress. And it's unfortunate because it takes away from the good things that he is, he is doing, like what he's done with General Motors, like getting equipment, you know, like enabling FEMA. There's so many things that have happened in this crisis that have turned out to be positive that his administration has enabled. But he, he diminishes all that with all the, you know, ancillary commentary. And he just, you know, I don't think he's ever going to change, so it is what it is, but it's unfortunate. Well, I still have you, Mark. You know, a lot of people want to see an end game to this. The president was talking about maybe sort of easing up on a lot of restrictions and, and, and sheltering at home. So as soon as Easter, he's backed away from that. Others said they simply don't know what is a good time to start thinking that way. Uh, have you given that much thought? But what do you think? Yeah, I mean, my thought is I have one thought. I'm not doing anything with my employees until I know they're absolutely safe. You know, I'm not going to ask them to come to work. I'm not going to ask them to leave their house. All, all this is uncertain. Nobody really has answers. And, you know, we're making progress. That's the good news. You know, you're seeing from Abbott Labs the 15 to 45-minute test so that we can quickly determine if right. someone has COVID. That, that's a great step forward. So I trust science. I trust American ingenuity. I trust our, our ability to create new solutions and therapies. And when those experts, when Dr. Fauci tells me it's okay to let my employees leave the house, that's when I'll do it. Um, you know, for all the reasons we just mentioned earlier, all the chit-chat that's going on, all the discussions in the press briefing, you know, that, that's really not relevant to the decision-making process. Mark Cuban, thank you very much. My best to you and your family, sheltering those kids and all that.